Howdy, Possum Patty here, and a little kitty too. You can see ears, you can see tail. And I'm just journaling. I've been working in my Hello Autumn journal. Look at that luscious chunkiness going on here. And I did several pages, like four or five pages, and I probably have about that many more to go, but it is almost done. And you know how I get when the journal's almost done. I kind of work on it till it's finished. So I'm going to do a couple pages now, and then I'm gonna make another video with a few more pages, and then it might be done. Come on along. So I have been working in the Hello Autumn Journal, and I've added a couple of pages. I have them done already. And the first one that I finished was right here. So I did this page with this really pretty material and the peanut dough. I journaled about taking down the hummingbird feeders and putting up the suet for the winter birds. And I had added this paper to the background because the background was white. But across from it was sort of a matching page with a plain background. But I liked the pumpkin on this one and I liked the pumpkin and the bottle gourd on that one. So I wanted to leave these images but cover up the pale background on both pages. So what I did on this page was just copy the idea from this one and I ripped the paper so that the pumpkin would show. And on this page, I had cut these little pumpkins out of a piece of scrapbook paper because they matched this pumpkin. Well, there were a couple of pumpkins left on that page and I added them to the bottom of this one. So it was just the orange pumpkin, but I added those on. I am trying to pull these two pages together so you've got this diagonal of green pumpkins going on here. And this page is about the October daisies. I love my daisies, and these are the kind of daisies that bloom very late in the season, uh, even after frost. So these are the October daisies. They're really pretty. And right behind these daisies was where I had the pumpkin patch. Also, to pull these two pages together, see I had this... Um, sort of wood grain polka dot back here while well, I used that behind the daisy picture. And I had a little scrap of this really pretty material when I trimmed down the top of this because it was sticking out just a little too far. I just added a little ruffle over here. So now these two pages sort of go together feeding the birds. And there were still a lot of pollinators out on these daisies. I'm surprised because we did have a few frosts. To this page, um, this is about our friend who's an Elvis impersonator, and I was talking about um, doing something to keep this from flipping around. And so I found this sticker in my stash of this record player. I said, oh, perfect, perfect. Um, he, Dale, or Earl, his name is Earl, they call him Dale, uh, wrote a song about Pink Floyd. And um, I just wanted like an old record. I was going to print one out from the internet, but then I found that sticker and I'm like, perfect. So I added that on there. Then this was the Big E Festival. So then we're on to World War I again, I know, because I hadn't finished up these pages, but... Um, you may think this was a really boring place to go to, but there was a lot of interesting things there. They had the airplane hangar open, they had the um, antique cars open, and there was actually a um, Model A uh, show going on in on the field. So people came from all over, brought their Model A's and their Model T's. So there were a lot of fun things to look at. Well, in the antique car barn, Flat Stanley found his all-time favorite car, and you'll never guess what it is, right? <laughs> 
Flat Stanley's favorite car is the Stanley Steamer. The Stanley Steamer. So this was a really cool looking red car with yellow wheels. And it runs on a steam engine. Okay, it's got a steam engine in there. Instead of gas, it's got steam, steam power. You know, kind of like the old-timey locomotives, right? The Stanley Steamer. So I took a page from my 1938 book, Stories for Boys, called Chums. And they had this racing cars. And um, there's a story in there about the racing cars. And this one's on fire, but it still won the race, I guess. So I thought this would be appropriate since this is, you know, very old, antique um, picture. Kind of goes with the old, antique cars. And something else in the car barn that, you know, even if you're not interested in cars, there was fashion. It was so amazing for every, like, era of cars. There was um, fashions of the day. So... The gentleman who donated the property, the barn, the cars, his wife was a collector of fashions. So there were all these antique, you know, dresses and coats and hats, and they were all, um, you know, in each display. So the different cars had the different outfits. Very interesting to look at. Very interesting to look at. So I had put this in already, and this is a Great Grandpa Katooch, 1917 with his World War I outfit on. And this is just some more paper from that book called Chums. It's 1938. But these planes were the same kind of planes that were flying that day at the World War I. And I put a picture of Stanley down here. If I can get him in there. I'm trying to get it with all, all that glare. There we go. There's Stanley in front of one of the old planes. And this was the brochure. Now, I already did journal on this side. If you remember, this was Possum Patty um, driving the World War I ambulance. And I did find my old ambulance and civil defense cards. So when I lived in Poplar Bluff, Missouri, I was part of the civil defense and disaster relief while I worked on my ambulance. And here's my uh, certification for emergency medical technician and my uh, little card from the University of Missouri at Columbia for taking the EMT course. But I already journaled about that. So there was the inside of the brochure here, and I was going to leave it alone, but then I was thinking, hmm, <laughs> there's something that I might want to put there, and it is a copy of a very old photo, and you see a little girl climbing on a, <laughs> an old airplane. Not as old as these airplanes, of course. This is more like a Piper Cub from the 1950s. I don't know, late 1940s, early 1950s. And believe it or not, this is Little Possum right here. Little Possum Patty when she was probably about, hmm, i say four. Maybe four years old, maybe five, but probably four years old there. And way back here, this picture was ripped. This is just a photocopy. I think I exposed it too much. I should have toned it down a little bit. But this is uh, Brother Possum back here, Little Brother Possum back there. And my father somehow, don't ask me how, talked Granddad, old Granddad, his father, into buying this airplane. And here I am climbing on it, and my father did take us up in this airplane. Uh, he was working on getting his pilot's license, and it was a very scary trip, let me tell you. This is the kind of trip where you're looking out the side window, and you look down at the ground, 
and then all of a sudden the ground <laughs> starts moving like this. <laughs> and now the ground is up there instead of down there. Very scary. Anyway, so I thought for funsies I would add in a little baby possum, maybe four years old, four and a half, climbing on her father's, well, it was really granddad's airplane, but her father was getting his license. Don't ask me why, and I don't think he ever did anything with it afterwards. I think my grandfather um, sold the plane. I don't think he kept it for very long, but that was pretty scary. Now, I got to remember, my father was not even the best driver in the world. <laughs> he was not a good driver at all, and here he is flying airplanes. Too funny. All right, so now I have another one of these 12 by 12s that I cut down to fit in the book. So it is 12 across, but it is only nine this way. So I had cut off the top. So like I did in the center of the first signature, I took the top part that was cut off and glued it to the bottom. And this one says grateful and blessed, and I have pictures of the sisters there. This one says the best things in life are the people we love and the memories we've made along the way. Well, it just happened to be little Amelia's fifth birthday. So I put in some memories. This is her when she was a baby. That's her newborn announcement. And she's a big girl now. She's five, so I put five over there. And that's one of those um, Dollar Tree stickers, number stickers. I just took my white gel pen and marked around it. Put, happy birthday, Millie. You're a big girl now. And then she, her um, parents gave her a lovely party. So these are the kids at night in their pajamas outside. I can't things under this camera today. Uh, that was post-party. But I put that in anyway because they're out in their PJs playing with sparklers. I thought it was funny. And here's Amelia with her family. And on this side, um, they had a pizza truck from New Haven, New Haven Pizza. So you had a smorgasbord of pizzas. And yes, he did make gluten-free pizzas on order. And they even had dessert pieces and pizzas, and he made dessert gluten-free pizzas. And they were some more pizzas, some mores with chocolate and marshmallows on a gluten-free crust. I never had dessert pizza before, but that was pretty interesting. <laughs> and of course, all four sisters were there. So we had to get our picture taken. So this is just... Some memories we're making along the way and people that we love. So again, this is the top of this page that I cut off and I glued it in the middle here and just made these little flips for the photos. So I had already done, I love these pictures. These pictures of these little birds came out so clear. And I was looking at this yesterday, and I'm like, you know, my picture of the tufted titmouse, even though his crest isn't up, shows a lot more color than that one. And the white-breasted nuthatch, I actually like my picture better than the, the one I cut out of the book. Isn't that funny? Anyway, I'm admiring my own work here. So then I did about fall planting. So I have these two pages that I'm going to work on today. These I'm going to save for another Stanley adventure. And I'm going to put that in another video because I have a lot of pictures from that one. And then the last page. So I'm going to do three pages. And then in the next video, I will finish this up. Okay, I stood up and now I have a cat on the chair. TT, what are you doing on my chair? TT, TT. What are you doing? TT, what are you doing on that chair? So I'm going to do some more fall journaling. And these pages already have this scrapbook paper in a pocket. 
and the pocket's not sealed. And this is a page from the uh, Mount Cuba gardening class catalog from a couple years ago. And I was thinking about using these bright, colorful leaves as the background. And it's hard to get it in here because this is sewn in the center, but I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to try very hard to get this in here. But I'm going to cut it first. So on this page, I'm going to do a couple of things. On, I'm going to put this on the background. And then on the pocket, I'm going to put pictures of some colorful leaves, right? That's why I want that. And this very bright red leaf, can you guess what it's from? It is a blueberry bush leaf, and they turn a really pretty red color in the fall. So I'm putting leaves that people don't usually think about. They're like, oh, the sugar maples are so colorful, and the birches are all yellow, golden. They don't think about other things. And one of the things we don't think about are the little um, fruit trees, berry bushes, things like that. So this is a, a high bush blueberry, a wild blueberry that grows in our yard here at Soggy Bottom. And the leaves turn really, really pretty red. Now this one you've seen at the end of a lot of videos. Yellow and orange and red. And can you guess what this one is? I told one person in the comments because they mentioned it. This is really, really pretty colorful bunch of leaves is actually not from the tree it's growing on. This is a vine growing up the tree. And these are poison ivy leaves. <laughs> uh, beside the Virginia creeper, one of the very first things that turn really pretty colors in the fall are the poison ivy leaves. So you want to be careful when you're out collecting colorful leaves with the kids to do a fall activity. <laughs> Watch out if they're on a vine growing up a tree and you can tell it's poison ivy because the vine that's it's like this dark line. But when you look at it in person, it has all these little hairs coming out of it. And the saying is vine be hairy, be wary because this is poison ivy. All right. So I was going to put these colorful leaves down here on the pocket. And I was going to put this on the background, so I have to cut that down. And then I'm going to make a card for the inside. I have this photo that I took of milkweed pods. And I don't remember when I took this. It was quite a while ago. So the pods dry and split open and the seeds come out. They have all that white fluff and they go floating away in the wind. So I'm going to use this like a journaling card. I was thinking of putting, the, this is a jelly plate print I did that I really love all the layers in this. Putting this on the back because it's big enough, it can fit there. And then I'm going to put this picture of a bunch of milkweed pods that I went and collected because I want to plant more milkweeds in the yard. Hopefully they'll grow. And then I don't know, might do some journaling or something on the back of that. Then I have some stuff already to go on that page, but let's stick with this page for right now. So I'm going to go ahead, cut this down and glue it to here. Mamma mia, that was so hard to get in there. <laughs> I wound up cutting it a little shorter because I couldn't get it inside this pocket on this side. And um, I cut this for a thumb hole. But remind me, whenever I pre-fold a paper into a pocket, before I sew it in, to make sure it has a background. I don't care what background, some kind of background on it. Yes. And then I ripped it a little at the top. So I just glued this ribbon down. I went down to the magical basement to get some autumn ribbon. And then I'm looking through my autumn junk basket here 
and maybe I will put something on here like that because you know I don't have enough in here <laughs> I need more stuff in here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and glue this I want it poking out a little at the top and then I'm gonna put some glue down here for the pocket and then I'm gonna work on the journaling card so I'm gonna use the beacon this is like Fabri-Tac foam and poster board adhesive I made these clusters I make these last year I think last year it's got a button on it. it's pretty heavy I'm gonna put a lot of glue I probably should hot glue it in but this might work this might work it's pretty I have several layers of Dollar Tree leaves and then their burlap leaf these buttons I got it I forgot where I got these buttons <laughs> oops sorry Dollar Tree and some ribbon that I had where did I get those buttons did I get those at Hobby Lobby I may have okay this is gonna slide around on here so I'm gonna put my clips that Dolores J Rush gave me right there okay oh it also has a like an orange spider very fluffy creepy cloth that came from the Dollar Tree there a little bit of fluff is coming off okay so I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna glue this down and then while this is drying I'm gonna do my journal card so I'll be back in a second okay the ribbon is still very wet so not too much I can do there but I did stick those two very colorful leaf photos on there and I decided I wanted to pick up some of this gold so I found a little scrap that perfectly matches that <laughs> even though this doesn't match that nothing matches anything else I picked up the gold from the ribbon put it over here isn't that strange okay did my little journaling blueberry bush leaves poison ivy leaves be wary and now that has to dry too I put a lot of glue on that ribbon so that is still wet so now I am working on the journaling card to go in the pocket and again I'm going to use this photo not very thick photo paper and I'm going to back it with this jelly print I've been dying to use this on something I need to do some more jelly printing it's so much fun oh I should get out there while we still have leaves on the ground because then I could uh, print 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 the leaves you know what I'll do I'm just tracing this because I held it up to the light and that's about where I wanted it but I'm gonna glue it down and then trim it I think and move this out of the way throw it on the floor pick this up so we can work on this Mr. Possum is out in the garage making a lot of noise on and off something about the leaf blower I don't know maybe it's not working he was playing some music really loud I asked him to close the door because right my window is right in front of me and right next to the window over there is the door to the garage I am so close to the garage and when he's out there making noise I can hear it but you know if he's playing music or the radio you got to be careful because you know you're not allowed to do that I don't understand YouTube sometimes like I recorded uh, a flip through of a magazine at the beach and I added some seagull sounds from a YouTube you know soundtrack that you can use and then they said that some recording 
representative of some recording company somewhere claimed that part of that was their recording and it was not. It was, you know, from the sound effects thing, it wasn't a, um, you know, record or anything. It was just seagull sounds and some waves. And they're like, oh, you can't use that, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, mamma mia. It's clean. Doesn't feel clean. <laughs> wow, I'm really using this. Got ink and paint and glue. Everything all over it. Do I have something clean here? I have cardboard. Okay. I just want to press this down. But I don't want to rub the photo into the mat because the mat's pretty dirty. But that's okay because the 1st of November I'm changing this anyway. That's my Dollar Tree mat. It's there to get dirty. So I don't worry about it. Sometimes it's easier just to glue down and then cut. <laughs> if you find out that you measure something and then you cut it and it doesn't fit and you wonder what you did wrong, glue first, cut second. So I'm going to cut this out and then go get that picture and do a little journaling. I will be right back. Okay, I just want you to look at these really luscious layers here for my jelly print. One more time. Look at the purple in the background. And this was a stencil. Beautiful colors. So I glued down my milkweed seed pod. Now, I don't like to collect the seed pods until they look like this, till they're really dry and ready to float away. See, these are still kind of immature. I'm hoping they're going to be okay. And the reason I collected them a little early, because this is a patch of milkweed that are growing at the beginning of a ramp up to um, a state highway. And last year, I noticed them. I told Mr. Possum we'll go back when the seed pods turn brown. And the highway department came and mowed them down before I can collect the seed pods. So we were going by the other day. Mr. Possum says, well, do you want to get them now? I said, okay. So I jumped out and collected them quickly. And I'm hoping they dry nice and the seeds are okay. But I figured I would give it a shot because last year they just got all mowed down anyway. Now the uh, milkweeds are perennial, so they sh should come back if you mow them down this time of year. But I wanted the seeds. Try to grow the milkweed for my monarch butterflies next year. So this is going to go in this pocket. So I get all my clips on here. Can I get this in there? Mm. I know that ribbon is still wet. Wow, this pocket is tight, 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 tight. Oh, it had a little bit of glue on it. I did get some glue on the inside of this pocket when I was trying to get this paper in there. So hopefully it's okay now. Yeah, that's good. I could even put these ribbons on top of that. Make it a little more interactive. Okay, that all has to dry. My very colorful leaf page. Love and autumn, love and autumn. It's just going by too quickly. All right, so this is going to be sort of an autumn page too. Another autumn thing I like to journal about are mushrooms. And my sister went up to the uh, White Mountains in New Hampshire. And she sent me back this picture that she took. And I love it because it's got moss here growing everywhere. It's got the fall leaves and this beautiful mushroom with a little leaf on the mushroom. 
I just love this picture, so I printed it out large. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip around the edges until it fits on this page with just maybe a little bit of this gold border here. So, I'm going to do this. I have to move some stuff. I have to move some stuff. Yes, I do. So, let's see. Let's start with the sides. See how that goes. And then I'm going to take these little pictures and just probably put them right on here. Something like that. I know it's upside down, but I'm trying to get an idea of what I want to do. I printed this out on the Pen and Gear Matte Photo Cardstock. And I'm not seeing a whole lot of difference between printing out on this cardstock that's photo cardstock and the regular cardstock, although the paper is really a lot different. The paper's got a funny finish to it. It doesn't take, you know, pen and ink writing on it very well, unless you're using a special pen. Because sometimes I save my scraps and I just, you know, jot down notes on them. And that wasn't working for me at all. Okay, so this is still way wide. Way wide, way wide. I didn't realize. I thought I printed it out six inches, but maybe not. So I'm going to do the usual rip, rip, rip until I get it to size. This should just about do it. So I'm going to probably put one picture up here and one picture down there. I was talking about this. This looks like ferns here. But I don't know if that's another moss. Could be the fern moss. <laughs> There's a little moss that looks like ferns. So the scale of this is so small, they might be a moss. I'm going to trim this a little bit, I think. And I wanted to write, but like I said, it's hard to write on this, so I might have to put a little backing again. I got this scrap sitting here. This might work. I just grabbed it because it was sitting here. What else is here? I got this one sitting here, and oh, I got a whole bunch here, actually. I got a whole bunch. Save that for something else. I might use this wood. Why not, right? It's a woodsy pitcher. And I'm going to make it thin, except for a little room to write there. So I'm going to cut it about there. Oh, you know what? That was wrong. That was wrong because I'm going to trim this first. Just taking off a little from the sides. Not going to take away from the mushroom at all. So... See what a difference that makes. I'm just go about there, about there. I gotta look up and see when I took that picture. Mushrooms are fun to photograph in the fall, fun photographing fall. That's quite the alliteration. Yeah, see, 
how nice that fits on there now. And this one. Should I cut this a little bit more? Nah. I might have to at the top there. I can see. I can see that this needs to be a little bit more. It's way crooked. To be possum straight, it just has to be a little crooked. Let's see. Oh yeah, much better, much better, much better. And this is going to go down here. And this is going to go up here somehow. I'm going to trim it down, so I'll be right back. I went ahead and just glued everything down off camera because I want to get to one more page. But these cute little white ones coming out of the stump by the driveway remind me of the little dancing mushrooms from Fantasia, Disney's Fantasia. I love that movie. I love it. I love it. If you're a certain age, you might remember that. And so here's my very colorful fall spread. I've got my milkweed pods, my beautiful jelly plate printing there. Is that stuck down? Looks like it is. Got my colorful leaves. I got my cluster on there. Oh, you can see the big schmoo of glue there. All right, that's okay. That'll dry. A schmoo of glue. A schmoo of glue. My ribbon is almost dry. Get my blueberry leaves, my poison ivy leaves. Okay, so I'm loving it. So this is going to be a Stanley adventure right here. So now for one more page, and I have to go get a different pack of paper, and you'll see why in a minute. The very last page in this very colorful, colorful, well, not that picture, <laughs> but the mostly very colorful early autumn into mid-autumn, lots of fall festivals and fall color is going to be the first frost. So I went over to the shelf and got the White Christmas Recollections. I bought this on sale at the end of the season last year. And I wanted some white paper to put down the picture of me writing in the frost. And let's see, how am I going to do this? Maybe I'll use this one for the background. And I can use this one for the background. This one might be easier to write on. I'm going to cover the page with this. It is like little pine branches that are white, tone on tone, and then some gold sparkly bits. And I just love frost. Frost is like nature's glitter. 
I love my glitter and I love my sparkles and I love my frost. When the first frost comes, I just have to run outside and pick up the leaves. And this page. Pick up the leaves and see them sparkle in the sun. And then I love the frost that um, collects around the edge of the leaf. So it looks like it's been dipped in sugar, maybe sugar coated. I love that. All right, so I'm going to cut this down and just put it on here. This is not going to be a very complicated page, probably just very simple. But this page, these two pages are going to be complicated. That's why I'm saving them for another another video. So I'm just going to go ahead and get this one done. I'm going to cut the paper down to size, print out my frost picture, and we'll be good to go. I have my background glued down. I have my two pinchers printed out. I decided to put a colorful leaf there after all, because this is going to be a transition from the colorful. You can see all the frost around the edge of that. I love that. From the colorful to the frost. And then I'm thinking I want to put like first frost or something on the page. So I went into my sticker drawer and I found these beautiful gold letters. I think I got these at that yard sale because they're Hobby Lobby, Paper Studio Hobby Lobby. And I thought maybe of putting it up the side of the page. The gold goes beautiful with this so background. I didn't plan it this way, but you know how that goes. Do I have an S? I did not cut out the S. So I will cut out the S. Okie dokie. So frost is five letters. So if you're not into measuring and all that stuff, the easy way to do it is just take the middle letter and put it in the center of the page and then evenly space them out from there. So I was thinking of doing frost that way and just having the two pictures and that's it for today. So where's the middle of the page? So I'm going to measure anyway, right? I think this is nine inches, about, so about four and a half. So about there is the middle. So about there is the middle, right there. Don't lose that mark. So about there is the middle. I put one little dot there. Now, do I need to add extra glue to these? They're not very sticky at all. Oh, where's my other glue? Use this one. This one has more glue in it. it. Makes it easier to pour. I'm just gonna put a little dab on here. So I don't know how old these stickers are. Like I said, I got them at a yard sale. And the backs don't feel very sticky. So hope I don't mess this up now. So about there is the middle. too close to the edge come down it's not coming down come on come on down well I guess they're gonna be at the edge because <laughs> it's not coming down oh don't do that don't schmoo all over everything stand by so this is a very simple page to commemorate the first frost of the season bunch of glue there I like these gold letters and that paper is perfect for that. So I will come back and do these two pages and finish this journal. Maybe in the next video, we shall see. But today was quite the marathon session. One, two, three, four, five or six. Maybe six, seven, eight. 
nine pages finished up. Two more to go. Nine pages finished up. This was a lot of fun. Thank you for coming along today. And I want to wish everybody happy junk journaling. Happy autumn. Bye-bye.